Hey guys, welcome to Toy Shop. Today we're gonna to be adjusting valves on a KX250F. The first thing you gotta do is you gotta get the tank off because you gotta get this cover off right here. First thing I did was pull the seat off, two bolts back there, get the tank off. There was one bolt up here. It was just easier to take this, leave this side shield on the tank. So there was a bolt down here and a bolt up here. Um, one of the bolts was stripped out on this side. So I just left this side, this uh, radiator shroud on there. Now that we can see the top of the motor, we have to get this cover off. So we're gonna have to take the spark plug cap off. Um, if you don't know how to take this clip off, I'm gonna show you because we're gonna we're gonna take this out of here so we got more room to work in here. So we gotta get this off. We gotta see where the valves are at right now so we can adjust them. To get this fuel line off, we've got a clip in there and then we've got a clip here. So we pop them two clips off, that fuel line should come out of there and then we should have a lot more room to work. The best way to get these clips off is on the this red tab. There should be two little ears on it and you kind of bow them out. Sometimes you can just use your finger. You wanna kind of spread it out over top of the black plastic and then push away from where it is. It'll kind of snap back halfway off of it and it should stay right there. Now that it's like that, now I can just pull that off that fitting. So I'm gonna get this one snapped off. All right, that one was a little harder to get popped off now. I need two hands for this. You're gonna leak a little fuel, but that's normal. I don't suggest lighting one up while you're doing this though. <clears throat> All right, so it, I didn't have to close that to get that out of there, but you wanna make sure, this is the long end, you wanna make sure you don't break this off or anything while you're getting it fished out by the airbox in the frame. This kid's running some good fuel in this bike cause this thing smells bomb. These spark plug caps are really tight, help keep water out of there. So you definitely gotta pull up pretty good on it, but you don't wanna break it. All right, I'm gonna tuck that out of the way over by the exhaust. Um, now would be a good time to kind of blow everything off, make sure you don't have much, any loose dirt or anything. And then we're just gonna pop these two bolts off and then this cover should come out. But before we do that, we're gonna stick the air gun down in here, blow out the spark plug hole, because there is a, a hole at the bottom of this cavity to let any water that does get inside of here drain out of the head so this doesn't pull up with water. So before I take this loose, I'm gonna make sure I blow that out really good. I'm probably gonna go through that weep hole at the bottom and blow back up through. You wanna do that before you pop this off so you don't get any dirt in the top of the head. Right there's that weep hole I was just talking about. I should be able to blow air back up back through that and it should come up the top of the spark plug hole. So if you ever see any liquid or water or something coming out of that hole, all that is is letting moisture out of the spark plug hole cavity and running down the cylinder. That's what it's designed for. So make sure you blow that out really good before we pull this top off because we're gonna pull the spark plug out. All right, I used a 5 8 spark plug socket and it fit down over top of that. And then I've got this little, this little pen magnet thing and it worked pretty good. So just pull a spark plug up out of there. The reason we're doing this is because we got to put the motor on top dead center and it's going to be easier to roll it over without the spark plug in it so it doesn't have any compression. Now we're going to finish taking these two bolts out and see if the valves are tight. All right, you got to watch. There's a little, little uh, washers underneath these bolts that have a rubber seal on them. So you want to make sure you don't lose them. Pull them off before you try taking this cover off so you don't drop it down in the frame. They get all dirty. Now... We're going to gently lift this off. This green wire right here is kind of in the way. We're going to pop that off this bracket. Lift up on this, this tab that's right here. And it should slide off this aluminum tab. So there, that's out of the way.
I'm gonna leave the gasket with the head and not the valve cover for right now. We're gonna take that off once we get this out. You have got an O-ring that seals off the spark plug cavity and I'm just gonna take that off of there so I don't lose it or drop it or anything dumb while we're playing in here. And now the head, the valve cover gasket, we're gonna pop out of here. On this side, on the sprocket side of the head, there's the big half moon looking things. Just be careful when you pop them out. You don't rip the head gasket while you're pulling up on it. Just want you a little step. Gonna do just a touch of persuading. Get that out of there. Now we can see the cams. Now what we gotta do is get top dead center with both sets of cam lobes facing upwards. That will make sure that we don't have any pressure from the cam lobes onto the shim buckets. And then we are gonna see how much play we got in here or how little gap we have in here. All right, so we gotta pop both of these caps off of here. We gotta pop this one off so we can rotate the crank with a ratchet. And then we're gonna pop this one off so we can see the timing mark on the flywheel. Please, for the love of Jesus, don't strip these out. And if you do strip one out, please just order another one. They're super cheap. All right, this was a 17 millimeter. So I just put the socket with an extension and the ratchet on this and I spun the motor over with the ratchet. There's a line on the flywheel and you want to line it up with this the groove that's cut in that that hole right there, that up and down. But you also want to make sure both cam lobes are facing up and out. So we know we're on the compression stroke of the timing and the timing marks lined up. Alright, so your factory timing marks is that little pin mark, that little dot on the sprocket and it lines up with this machine surface on the head. So I know my exhaust cam is on the outside there. There's one over there too. What I like to do too, which this doesn't always work, it depends on if the chain falls off the sprocket on the crank or not, but I'll Sharpie mark the pin on the chain right here where that divot is on the cam. And then same here too. Right there's that divot mark and right there's that pin I Sharpie. So when I counted it, there's there's 10 pins, including the sharpied ones, from this dot to this dot. So now I know when I line it up that the, that the little pin marks on each side of the cam need to line up with the head. And then I need 10 pins between this dot and this dot. That makes sure that one's not towed in a tooth and I accidentally have 9 pins between the teeth. And it should work out pretty good. Now, if the Sharpie mark, if if the chain slips a tooth on the crank, then maybe this Sharpie mark might be one over here, but then that Sharpie mark should also be one more over here. If I can keep this chain on the crank pull, on the crank sprocket good enough and it doesn't move, by the time I get the valve lash set, then these should line back up. But at least I can use them for reference even if it does move down there. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is take the smallest feeler gauge I have and see if they fit in here. So if they don't fit in here, then we're not really sure where we're at. Intake valves don't feel too bad. And the exhaust ones feel all right. All right, so now we're going to stick the low tolerance feeler gauge in there and see how that is. All right, for all intents and purposes, the low, the minimum gap we need to have is 7 thou. So I'm going to stick the 7 thou feeler gauge in here and see if it goes. It goes in that one. And it goes in that one. All right, for all intents and purposes, for the high side, is 9 thou on the exhaust. So let's see if a 9 thou is going to fit. 9 thou seems to fit. Well, if a 10 fits also, then we are going to have to shorten that gap up, which usually is not the case. Usually there's never too much clearance. It's always usually never enough clearance. 10 fits in there kind of snug. I don't really think I can get a 10 in that side, though. Hmm. Let's see if we can get an 11 in there. All right, 11 definitely doesn't go. So I'm gonna say, if anything, the exhaust is a little loose. Let's try the intake. Now for all intents and purposes on the intake, 
four thou is the minimum clearance we need for this. And we have four. Now high tolerance is six thou on the intake. So we're gonna see if a six is gonna fit. Six is a little snug. Hmm, this is not what I was expecting to find. Let's try seven. Technically the six shouldn't have went because high limit on an intake on this bike is five thou and nine tenths. All right, so a seven does not go. Seven goes really, really tight on that side. All right, huh. Well then, I guess that's how you check some valves. All right, so now that we got figured out that both of these valves need to actually come up a little bit. We can take the cam chain tensioner out of it so we can get this cam cap off of here. We get the cams out and we can start putting some thicker shims in here. So now that I can see the cams and everything, I've got to get tension off of this timing chain before I can take the, the cam cap off. So first thing, you always want to break the center one loose because most of the time that's really tight and it's a lot harder to get it loosened when it's not bolted into the cylinder. So I'm gonna break the center one loose. We're gonna use that during assembly, but we're not gonna use it to take it off. And then I'm gonna take these two eight millimeter headed screws all the way out and get the cam chain tensioner out of there. Then that'll free up my cam chain and then I can start playing with the cams. All right, so I got the cam chain tensioner out. I broke this loose and uh, backed it out. Now, this is one thing I've never run into before, is most cam chain tensioners I've pulled out weren't symmetrical, and this one looks pretty symmetrical, so, and I didn't pay that much attention when I pulled it out, so I need to know which direction this goes back in when I put it in, because this foot isn't symmetrical, but the head here is. Usually these bolts are offset a little bit, so I'm gonna have to look on the microfish for that to see which way this foot goes in here, but we've got this out and we can focus on the valves for now. There are these half moon spacers that go over top of these bearings here to keep them located. I'm going to pull them out right now so I don't lose them. You don't want to drop them down in the, where the cam chain is. If you do that, you're going to need a really long skinny magnet. Alright, so I got reusable zip ties. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly work this off of the cams. This chain... I have to lift the exhaust cam a little bit to get that chain out of there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to zip tie it up here to the frame rail. So I keep, should keep it from falling down in there. And I'm going to pull the cams out. Make sure you keep the intake one separate. Make sure you got it labeled. Well, you don't, I, you don't have to label it. The exhaust cam is going to have the decompression flywheel weight on the, side, the outside of it. So we're going to pull that out. Alright, this is how I like to label it. This is my, my intake. Two valves are going to go in these two squares here. And then my exhaust are going to go here and here. And then I labeled sprockets on this side. So this, the sprocket on the cam is on this side. And then same with the intake cam there. And then the clutch baskets on this side of the motor. So I'm going to put those two valves, the shims and buckets there. So I've got this laid out. I wrote down how many pins are between the dots or including the ones on the dots. So I just made a note right there for that. But now we're going to pull the buckets and the shims out. And we're going to set each shim and bucket in each square. And then we'll do some math. All right, make sure you whip your magnet off. You want to be careful when you do this. We're going to pull out this first bucket. And you see that round thing in the bottom? That's the shim. It's probably stuck there between just suction from the oil and the magnet. It's The magnet pulled both of them out together too. So 
you want to make sure that you don't drop that center piece out when you're pulling these buckets up that's why a magnet works really good don't get in there with a screwdriver or anything like that so you don't want to screw up these these buckets All right, so I got all the shims out and the buckets out. Now what you gotta do is you gotta figure out what shims were in it so we can start from there. Um, the only one of these four shims that has any markings on it at all is this intake shim. And I don't expect you to be able to read that, but it's a, it's a 2.90, so that gives us a starting point from there, but you're gonna need something to measure these with if they're not labeled. If they're labeled and you know they haven't been tapered or tampered with, like ground or anything or sand smaller, then if they're labeled with numbers, then we can just go based off of the numbers. So I have a micrometer. If you have a set of calipers, that will work too, but I don't use this mic very often and it's not gonna hurt it to use it. So I'm going to measure all of these and then I'm going to mark right down what size is in it on all four squares and then we are going to get some that are a little bit thicker. Alright, so I measured each one and I wrote it down. Now, this kit right here, Hot Cams makes a really good general kit that comes with a bunch of different sizes and it comes with three of each size. I know certain your Yamahas had three intake valves, I think. So it is nice to have the sets of three. But down in the bottom of the pocket, you can see how thick these are. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find, I need the shims to be about 0.05 millimeters bigger, which is about two thousandths because all four valves or at least a thou over high tolerance. So that'll get me a little bit closer to center of our tolerance we're allowed. So I'm gonna get these measured out and then we're gonna put the shims and buckets back in it. All right, so you have to put this, we pulled the shim and the bucket out together, but when we put it together, you have to put the shim down in first and it fits right down in on top of the the stem of the valve and it fits in top inside of this this spring retainer so but they fit in there kind of snug so you want to make sure it's not sitting in there crooked and you actually kind of put your finger down on it and make sure it's sitting in there all the way flat so I'm gonna go through and put all the new shims in on each valve that it's for and then we're gonna put the cams back in All right, now we're going to put the buckets back in. Make sure you keep the buckets marked and you want to make sure the same bucket goes back in the same hole because the buckets have wore with the head in each each hole. So one bucket might be a little bit bigger than another one. I don't know if they're different or not. They look the same, but ideally you want to keep the buckets with the valves they came off of. They should just fall right down over top of the spring. You shouldn't have to persuade it at all. Just a light little push down. Now we're gonna keep the cam chain off of it. We're just gonna dry fit this. You wanna make sure that your cam lobes are up, not facing down, because you don't want any pressure on the buckets. All right, we're gonna slide this back on top of here and kind of slide the cams back and forth till the rings on the bearings fall into their home. You wanna make sure you can get this cap pushed all the way down by hand. You don't wanna to have to try to suck it down with a screw because that means something isn't lined up right and all you're gonna do is damage it. Now, I'm not gonna give her the ugga duggas with this. I'm just gonna run it down with the impact till they just start to snug up. If you look at the top of this cap, there's numbers on the bolts, and that is a, a pattern where you tighten them up.
Now I'm going to get the ratchet. If I was less lazy, I would look up the torque spec for this and torque it. But really, you just want even pressure on it. And you want them snugged up halfway decent. Please don't yell at me for that. I've done this enough times. Now we got to make sure we torque, well, get these tightened up. Because that's also going to play a role in how, how much clearance we have at the top of each valve. I'm gonna make sure both of my cams are free. That one was pinched a little bit, it kind of drifted back. All right, now the exhaust one, there's a, this clutch right here on the end of this, that controls a decompression down in on the valve. See that shining down in there? So we wanna make sure that this cam, the lobes aren't hitting the bucket and that decompression isn't. So now that we have both of these freed up, we are going to go back in here and we're going to remeasure these with feeler gauges and see if we're where we want to be. All right, so I just checked it and this valve over here is the only one that isn't good right now. I still can fit the seven, the six still goes in this, which is at high limit. So we're going to have to pull this whole cap off so we can get this cam out, so we can get that shim and bucket out, and then we can put another shim in it. And then we're going to put it right back together and we're going to check that valve. Pop this one out, slide the new shim in, slide the bucket back in, set the cam back in with lobes up, put this locator collar back on that bearing, set this back in here. Well, before I do that, there's an O-ring that's underneath here. I'm going to put this on because I'm just hoping that this is right. We're going to get that set back in there. Now we're going to set this. And kind of shimmy the cams a little bit. So I guess because this is the final inspection, I should probably torque these. Torque spec in the books at 87 inch pounds. That is torqued. We're going to recheck all four valves again. All right, they all look good. Now we have to pull this off again so we can get the timing chain put on here and we can get this timed. But then we put it on for the last time and then start putting this thing back together and see if it's going to run. All right, I took both these keepers out of here so I don't risk dropping them down in the motor while I'm getting this in time. But we're going to hope that the timing chain stayed on the sprocket on the bottom. Um, I'm going to double check that the flywheel is still on the timing mark and then just kind of a rule of thumb, both of our cams are going to be facing outwards like a V. So that will give us a rough start and then that's kind of roughly where our dots should line up right here on both sides of the cam. Alright, I know this lighting is trash, but I just got my Sharpie marked pen lined up on that dot. I'm still lined up with my flywheel mark. So now, I want to line up my other Sharpie mark with the other divot here. And get this slit on this cam. And what I'm going to do is count the pen. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So, I am off. I think I had a dyslexic moment. There's 12 pins in between this. It's 10 pins not including the Sharpie. Two, four, six, eight, ten. So if you include the Sharpies, that is 12. But my dots down in here and over in here are both lined up with this machine surface of the head and my flywheel mark. My flywheel mark down on the flywheel cover of the motor is lined up. That looks like it's timed. Sometimes it helps if you stick your finger in the timing chain tensioner hole and push out on the slider. It'll help rotate everything back in because there's definitely some slop in here. But if I push in on 
that slider, it'll bring everything tight like it, like it would be if it was completely assembled. And then you can double check that your dots line up, which they do. So now I'm gonna reassemble the top of this. All right, so I don't wanna bore you with showing you how to put that on there for like the umpteenth million time. So this is on there, it's torqued. There's an O-ring underneath where this O-ring goes down in there. So make sure you, you got that O-ring in there. There's those two keepers on the bearings here. Make sure those are in there. Now I'm ready for the, the cam chain tensioner. And remember how I said this thing was symmetrical? The holes aren't offset to one way. Well, the only way, I think I got it figured out. But if you look on this right here, this bottom right here is milled off. So you can see how this cam chain tensioner made full contact all the way up around because there's dirt on the actual cylinder itself. There's like a small ring around up here with dirt on it. Well, down here, it's clean all the way out to the edge. That means there must be dirt on this face on the cam chain tensioner. So if I look at it, where's it at? I don't know if you can see it or not, but right there, there's a small strip of dirt. So, my thumbs on the small strip of dirt has to go down there on the bottom, so it goes in there this way. So with this little foot, the heel is at the bottom and the toes of it go towards the top. So we're gonna get this thing tore apart and I'll show you what this thing is. So we're gonna thread this bolt out. And inside here, there's a spring and a rod. Now, what this does is this only goes out one way. It won't push in because of this little catcher in here. So you have to pull this all the way apart, push back on this little foot, and then it'll slide right in. So we're gonna push this all the way in. We're gonna bolt this in. Then once this is bolted solid to the, the cylinder, then we're gonna slide in this spring and pin, and then we're gonna snug this cap up. All right, so we're gonna put the toes up and we're gonna slide this in here. Make sure your O-ring on this is in good shape. Slide this in here. Get it snapped in there with my fingers first. So I know that O-ring didn't pinch. And then we're gonna bolt this back in. Now the cam chain's still loose till we put that center bolt in. All right, now we wanna take this spring and pin and just set it in here. You don't wanna push on it because you don't want your finger to press, to push that, that foot out too far. You want just this cap tightening into it to set the pressure because it's possible you use your finger and push it in too far and accidentally set that chain too tight. You wanna hear it clicking as you're threading it in so that this will set the tension of the cam chain by itself. You don't wanna give it a false reading by tightening it up too much by pushing it in with your finger. So I heard it click as I threaded this in. Now I'm gonna snug this up and then it should be set. All right, so now that we got everything assembled, we got the cam chain tensioner in there. What we wanna do is roll it over as slow as we can. because we want to make sure that none of the valves are going to hit. Pretty much once you get one or two revolutions, one or two strokes full cycles through the motor and nothing hits, they go fast to make sure you don't hear any tanging or anything. And I think this looks pretty good. So we're all tightened up there and now we get to start reassembling. All right, you want to make sure this this gasket is clean. This one with the big half moons on it. And you want to get the half moon set down in there. Make sure that O-ring is lined up pretty decent around the outside. Now we got to put this O-ring in on top here for the spark plug. Set our cap, our lid back on here. You want to make sure that that cam cover gasket lip 
goes all the way around here nice it fits in there nice make sure this isn't lifted off of the head at all because you don't want to pinch pinch that gasket all right now there's a seal and a washer and a bolt here you want to make sure you got all them when you stick that in there tighten this up all right our little green clip over here we want to make sure we stick that back on there now we're going to put the spark plug back in. If you have a new plug, this would be a good time to put it in since you're already here, which I do not. I think we're done in here now. All we gotta do is we gotta set, put this, there's a fuel line we gotta put back in here and then set the tank on it and see if she fires up. So this long end needs to go back up in here. So we're gonna fish that in first. Cause that goes up by the beer box. I'm gonna get this one slid on. Push her all the way up on there. Then you can just push this red tab down. And voila, that's on there. Now we're ready for the tank. I did almost forget to put these plugs in. Don't do that. For this little plug right here, it's easier if you take the O-ring off the screw and set it in that cover and then thread and then thread this in here because if you don't you risk pinching that o-ring because that o-ring doesn't want to just fall into that slot so before we put all the bodywork back together we're going to try to start it just in case we got to pull it back off but let's see if it fires up Let's get her back together. All right guys, so a couple things before we go take this for a test ride. Um, I just wanted to say um, for the, the valve shim kit, there is a difference between 250 and 450 valves. The diameter of the shim is a little bit different. So you can't swap those back and forth. If you watch this and you got a 450 to do, you're gonna have to make sure you have shims for a 450. Um, if I can find a link to the shims, um, I'll post them down below. So make sure you check down there. It might be an affiliate link. So that, that'll help me out a little bit too if you end up buying them from my link. So, um, and then when I was in the top end, I did not expect to find loose valves. 90% of the time, if you think your bike needs the valves adjusted, it's because you've got tight valves. So what you want to do if you have tight valves is you're going to want to, you're going to want to put in a shim that's way smaller, like pretty decently smaller, not all the way at the bottom and then put it back together and then measure your gap so you have something to go by because when it's tight you're not sure if you're going to have to come down like 0.1 millimeters or 0.2 millimeters you're not really sure where you need to go so you're going to be guessing regardless so you just throw a smaller shim in there and then you remeasure other than that hopefully you guys found this informative and uh let's go take this for a test ride